हेलो नेक्स्ट वीक नेक्स्ट टॉपिक लेक्चर एट वीक सिक्स स्पेशल मेट्रिसिस इन गॉस साइडल मेथड चैप्टर इलेवन सो इन दिस टॉपिक वी विल लर्न अबाउट सम स्पेशल मेट्रिसिस एंड एन अदर मेथड फॉर द सॉल्यूशन ऑफ द इक्वेशंस बट विद द दिस इज द अप्रोक्सीमेट मेथड फॉर द सॉल्यूशन ऑफ द इक्वेशंस so this is called as the gauss seidel method so first we will look at some of the special matrices so what are those special matrices there are certain special matrices uh, have a particular structure that can be exploited to develop sufficient solution schemes so the first part of this uh, topic is devoted to two such systems banded and symmetric matrices so first we will look at the banded matrices and then we will look at the symmetric matrices the second part of this chapter turns to an alternative to elimination method that is approximate iterative methods so the focus is on the gauss seidel method which implies initial guesses and then inter iterates to obtain refined estimates of the solution so the banded matrices banded matrices Uh, certain matrices have particular structures that can be exploited to develop efficient solution schemes a banded matrix is a square matrix that has all elements equal to 0 with the exception of a band centered on the main diagonal so these matrices typically occur in the solution of differential equations so the dimensions of a banded system can be quantified by two parameters the band width bw and the half bandwidth hbw so these two values are related by b w is equal to 2 hp w plus 1 so methods like gauss elimination are often inefficient in solving banded matrices for cases where pivoting is unnecessary because none of the elements outside the band would change from their original values of 0 thus unnecessary space and time would be expended on storage and manipulation of these useless zeros so this is the concept of the uh, banded matrix so there is the diagonal element and then along the diagonal one element over on the other side the other element on the other side there will be matrices so and may there may be two or three matrices but all the other uh, elements but all the other elements outside of this band will be zero matrices so uh, this is a typical example for a tri diagonal system so in the tri diagonal system so you have uh, elements like this so the diagonal elements uh, in this rotation are represented by f1 f2 f3 and the elements under the diagonal are represented by e2 e3 and there is no e1 because uh, this this starts from the second row e element starts uh, starts from the second row and similarly the elements over the um, diagonal elements are represented by g1 g2 and g3 so if we have this kind of uh, a system of equation then we can solve it okay Uh, by a certain uh, approach which certain alternative approach of course we can use the gauss elimination method but uh, as it has been said that in this case because since there are many zeros involved so there will be many unnecessary uh, there will be many uh, additional uh, calculations which may be uh, reduced by if we adopt some other method so we will be we are now looking at that other method so this method is the called as the thomas lu algorithm so it is basically the lu decomposition okay but a special version of the lu decomposition version so here we can see that uh, we can have some uh, application of the lu decomposition so this uh, th uh, L thomas lu decomposition in this case we calculate the values of e and f that means if we have then if we have some original Uh, matrix okay if we have some original matrix we can convert that original matrix in the banded form if we have some matrix in the banded form we can convert that matrix in the in these e and f values 
by this algorithm. So the value of ek will be equal to ek divided by fk minus 1. So for example, if k starts from 2, then the value of e2 will be equal to e2 divided by f1. Okay. So e2 will be equal to e2 divided by f1. So e2 is basically the first value. So there is no e1. So okay. So the value of e2 in the uh, decomposed matrix will be equal to the value of e2 in this original matrix divided by the value of f1. So this divided by this. Okay. Similarly e3 divided by f2. So you can see that we are dividing these coefficients by the uh, the values of e3 with f uh, with the diagonal elements so this is easy to understand so you see e divided by f so the values of e we can determine like this way and similarly the values of f in the uh, lu decomposed matrix uh, will be given by fk is equal to fk minus ek times gk minus 1 which means that if we want to find the value of uh, uh, f2 okay there is no k is equal to 1 there is no f1 the value of f1 will be same in the decomposed matrix so the, but the value of f2 may change and that value of f2 will be equal to uh, f2 is equal to uh, f2 uh, okay uh, minus uh, e2 into g1 okay g1 so uh, f2 is equal to so it means that uh, for example f2 value will be equal to this value of f2 minus e2 value that means uh, the value which was calculated before okay for the uh, lud composed matrix and then times g minus 1 so g uh, g1 so g1 will be uh, this value okay so in this way this uh, uh, algorithm will be applied and then the matrix a will be decomposed into lu version and then from this lu version we can find the by the forward and backward substitution the solution okay so let's see it with the help this uh, example so uh, in this uh, matrix we can see that uh, this is the bend, uh, banded matrix so this is a tri diagonal banded matrix and then uh, all the elements are 2.04 2.04 on the diagonal elements and the valid elements around the diagonal are minus one all elements are minus one and then on the right hand side we have these uh, values of the coefficient so of course this is the general form and then this is the formulation so first step in this case will be now to find the values of e1 uh, sorry e2 e3 3 uh, okay based on these uh, values uh, of e1 f1 e2 e3 etc in the original uh, matrix okay so and using these uh, this uh, it, uh, recursive uh, recurrence uh, formulas so in this way then we can find the value of e2 like this so it may be better for me to explain it uh, on a worksheet hello in fact i have already done this on excel so let me explain it here so for example this was the uh, original equation and then these were the coefficients and then coefficient e2 uh, will be equal to uh, these are the values okay okay so let me maybe i can copy this sheet A copy okay and now this is the okay so what I can do is I can mm -hmm. sorry I will just recreate this sheet okay so what we need to find initially is 
the values e2 f2 e3 f3 e4 f4 okay so remember that yeah these are the values where the, these values are located e values are under the diagonal f values are the diagonal values values so in the thomas decomposition method so e2 will be equal to e2 will be equal to if you see this formula e2 will be equal to e2 divided by f1 so e2 so remember that uh, these e f uh, values will be used in the decomposed matrix okay and this is the original matrix okay so there will be a decomposed matrix we are finding the values in this uh, in decomposed matrix okay so the e2 will be equal to e2 uh, that e2 is in the uh, in this original matrix so where will be that e2 e2 will be here okay it should it should be here now this is the main diagonal and then e2 is here so it will uh, this value divided by uh, f1 so f1 is basically this uh, the element on the top of that e2 value so it will be minus 4.92 similarly e3 will be equal to e3 will be equal to e2 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 will be sorry e3 uh, e, uh, e will be equal to e3 over f2 so e3 is uh, this uh, divided by f2 okay divided by f2 but in this case f2 will not be this one f2 will be the recursive value okay so we need to find the recursive value over here so f2 but f2 we need to find first let's find f2 first f2 is uh, f2 is from here f2 is equal to f2 so f2 is equal to f2 so that f2 is here in here minus e2 e2 is here this recursive value uh, times g1 so g1 is here okay so it will be 1.54 and now uh, e3 will be uh, equal to e3 will be equal to yes so e3 will be equal to sorry e3 will be equal to e3 so what is e3 e3 is here divided by f2 f2 is here okay so it will be minus 6.4 minus 0.645 remember that these are the recursive relationships so we will be using the uh, values of e and f which are which will be latest from these previous values so the values for the uh, later coefficients will be calculated from the values in the, from the previously calculated coefficients similarly now f3 so f3 is equal to f3 so f3 f3 what is f3 there is no f3 here but f3 is available here okay this is f3 uh, minus e3 so e3 is here and uh, times g2 so g2 is here so it will be this and then e4 e4 is equal to e4 e4 is equal to e4 so e4 is here uh, divided by f3 f3 is here f3 is uh, will not use this f3 we will use the latest f3 which will be from here so it will be this and then f4 f4 will be f4 so we will use f4 from here divided by uh, uh, sorry f4 yeah, f4 minus e4 minus e4 is here and times g3 g3 is here so it will be this 1.323 okay so with this thing with those coefficients in my uh, uh, with these coefficients we have calculated so now we can determine the L matrix so L will be the lower triangular matrix with all the elements on the diagonal as one so diagonal elements are one 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 and the 
elements under the diagonal are so in the L matrix the elements under the diagonal will be the uh, calculated E values that is this and this and this so there will be E2 uh, there will be E2 uh, E2 E3 and E4 these values and all the other elements will be 0 then there will be the uh, U matrix so in the U matrix uh, that will be the upper triangular matrix so the values uh, will be um, there will be the diagonal elements so the diagonal elements will be the uh, elements uh, which will be F1, F2, F3 so F1 will be from the original matrix and then F2 will be from the one we have calculated and F3 is here and uh, then there will be F4 that will be here okay and then uh, for this uh, upper triangular matrix there will be the elements uh, g1 g2 g3 which will be from the original uh, matrix so here here and here okay so that will be the upper triangular matrix so um this is the lower triangular matrix and this is the upper triangular matrix so so we can check whether it's uh, correct or not so then in that case we can multiply it but for multiplication on excel we must have we must uh, show these show these zero elements so in this case uh, what I can do is I can just copy this matrix and it will automatically show those zero elements and then uh, here and it will show the, the zero elements over here now I can multiply so it will be a 4 by 4 matrix so equal to mmult matrix multiplication and this is array 1 comma and then this is array 2 and then control shift enter so I will get this so you can see that I will get the original matrix 2.04 and then same so that means we have done is LU decomposition in a correct way. So now the rest of the procedure is the same as for the solution in the case of the LU decomposition. Uh, that means first we will use the L matrix to find the uh, intermediate uh, components R1, R2, R3, R4. So let's let me first uh, use the L, L matrix is this one okay and this is the L matrix and now we will calculate this R1, R2, R3, R4 and then these coefficients Okay, so these coefficients are here. Okay, so now use the forward substitution. So for forward substitution, R1 will be 
is divided by this coefficient one okay so simply there is no need to divide by one and then it will be 0 0.8 minus um, this one right so it will be 1.29 uh, no i made the mistakes it will be 0 0.8 um, minus Uh, 0 0.8 minus um, this value and then it has to be multiplied by the, this value and then I will get 20.8 that will be 20.8 and then this value minus this value and then multiplied by this upper value uh, this is corresponding to R2 so I will get 14.22 and then this is 200 minus this value uh, multiplied by this so it will be 210 so I will get these coefficients for the calculations and now I will use the upper triangular matrix upper triangular matrix is here and then here and then we will calculate the values of t1 t2 and t3 the original solution that will be for the um, using the backward substitution back substitution forward substitution and back substitution so for back substitution this value will be this divided by this one so it will be 103.48 um, and yeah uh, yeah actually i made a mistake over here i did not use the correct u matrix so the correct u was uh, this one so correct u matrix was this okay so now i got 159 then from from here i will get uh, t3 so it will be this value minus this value multiplied by this value divided by this coefficient so it will be 124 and now for the further back substitution this value minus this value multiplied by this value divided by this and uh, then 40.8 um, minus this multiplied by this value divided by this and then it will be 65.97 so in this way then we have got this uh, uh, solution okay so for this so whether this solution is correct i think we can even verify it so we have this uh, uh, original matrix so we can write this original matrix like this okay and then This is the original matrix and this is the solution this is the solution now if i multiply these two matrices then we should have the m m u l t so array one is this um, array two is this packet close control shift enter so it will be 40.8 0 0.8 200 0.8 yeah same so the solution is correct so in this way we can apply this uh, 
uh, Thomas uh, algorithm to find the solution uh, for a bandit uh, matrix. So this solution is uh, uh, computationally uh, useful for when we perform a large matrices matrix and then uh, less number of computational operations or flops uh, are involved in this case. Uh, okay, so after this there is another method which we can see and that is called as the Cholesky decomposition. So uh, this uh, method uh, is used for uh, symmetric matrices and uh, for the symmetric matrices we have uh, this property that uh, a symmetric matrix A can be represented as uh, a lower triangular matrix and uh, when we multiply this lower triangular matrix with its uh, transpose so uh, then we get that original matrix A okay so in this case uh, that uh, symmetric matrix A can be converted into a lower triangular matrix so if we want to find this uh, lower triangular matrix that means that all the elements above the diagonal will be zero so we only need to find the elements on the diagonal and uh, under the diagonal so these elements can be determined by these recurrence relationships okay lk1 lki and like that okay so this uh, yeah. Recurrence relationship looks a little bit uh, complicated, but uh, when we apply it, I think we can understand it better. So let's see it with the help of an example. Okay, so the example uh, is uh, uh, this. So suppose if we have a matrix A, which is uh, symmetric, so you can see that 6, 5, 6, 15, 55, and then 6, 15, 55. So this is a uh, symmetric a matrix so uh, we want to apply this Cholesky decomposition method uh, to decompose uh, this uh, matrix into uh, in this format okay that means l l transpose so therefore we want to find this lower triangular matrix and this for finding this lower triangular matrix so we need so suppose this lower triangular matrix is uh, this one so there will be the components l uh, these elements these three elements will be zero but these uh, other uh, five elements so three on the diagonal and uh, other six elements three on the diagonal and three away from the diagonal uh, may not be uh, zero so we need to find these elements so these elements can be represented by l11 because, uh, due to their location L is for lower triangular, L11, L21, second row, first column, L22, L31, L32, and L33. And then from the recurrence relationships, we can find these values. So in order to illustrate this, uh, these calculations, let's go back to the Excel spreadsheet. So in this Excel spreadsheet, I have uh, written down this uh, symmetric matrix and then for our reference I have written down these equations which will be used and the echo of, um, elements which we need to determine are L11, L21, L22, L31, L32 and L33 okay so how we will how will we determine L11 so for the determination of L11, L22 and L33 we will use this second recurrence relationships so if you can see that it says lkk okay so okay so for l11 so k is 1 k is 1 so l11 is equal to square root of a11 a11 is here okay so it is equal to sqrt square root uh, a11 and minus this uh, this term which is the summation of this term but this term is zero because k is equal to one okay when k is equal to one so there is it means that this is zero over here that means there is no summation over here so for l11 this term is zero so there is only this much this term this is 2.4495 
which is calculated as 2.4495. Okay, so now uh, L21. So for L21, we will look at this uh, equation. And in this equation, there is, a, you can see that this is a, a fraction. So I will put a bracket over here. So it is L21, which means that K is 1, I is, uh, K is 2, I is 1. So A21, A21. So A21 is here. Okay, A21 is here. And minus, uh, you can see that i is 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 so therefore this summation term will be 0 over here so uh, then divided by uh, l i i l 1 1 okay so l 1 1 is here so it will be this term 6.2 okay so next is l 2 2 so l 2 2 we will go here l 2 2 is equal to s q r t square root a22 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 yes a22 so a22 will be here right 55 a22 will be here and then minus mm, what will be that because now k is equal to 2 okay k is equal to uh, 2 so what is this value so now this is uh, j is equal to 1 to 1 so what will be this value so there will be only one term okay and that one term will be lkj lkj will be uh, that is k1 uh, l21 uh, okay because k is equal to 2 over here so l21 okay so what is l21 l21 is this one term this term okay so anyway so we have first we will take uh, a22 so which is uh, this term mm -hmm. okay let me see. l22 so l22 is uh, sqrt sqrt a22 a22 is this term and minus this one this term is l21 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 is here and that is square and then bracket close for the square root and then close it so it will be 4.1833 now l31 l31 is equal to this term okay so it will be a31 a31 will be here uh, minus so now it is uh, 3 and 1 okay 3 and 1 i is equal to 1 so this term will be 0 so there is no summation over here so it means that will be b3 divided by uh, l i i so i l 1 1 divided by l i i so i is 1 in this case right because 3 1 so l 1 1 so what is L11? L11 is this. Okay, so it will be 22.454. Okay, now L32. So L32, we will use this term. Okay, 32. Okay, 32. So it will be L32 will be uh, 3 to A32, this one, this term minus now uh, this is 2 okay so 2 minus 1 is 1 okay i is equal to 2 2 minus 1 is 1 so j is equal to 1 to 1 so there is only one term over here so what will be that l i j so j is 1 so i is 2 so l 2 1 okay i is 2 in this case so l 2 1 so l 2 1 is this term multiplied by l k j k is 3 l 3 1 l 3 1 is this term okay and now divided by l i i l i i means l 2 2 l 2 2 is this term okay so you can see that this is a little bit complicated okay but 
hope it is correct okay now l33 l33 is equal to sqrt a33 a33 is this minus now 33 so 3 means k is equal to uh, 3 3 minus 1 is 2 so j is equal to 1 2 and j is equal to 2 so that means there will be two terms that will be added okay used so first term will be uh, l31 and the second term will be l32 okay and then square so l31 is this term squared and then minus l32 this term squared okay and then close so it will be 6.11 6.11 okay so with this uh, we have all the values which we needed for the lower matrix okay lower triangular matrix so l11 okay and then uh, sorry l21 l22 and l31 l32 and then l33 so this is the lower triangular matrix okay and uh, let's add 0 0 0 as well by ourselves okay and uh, so we need to verify it okay so we need to you can find the l trans pause so for this i think what we can do is we can find the transpose okay so the transpose will be also a 3 by 3 matrix so it will be equal to transpose the array so transpose the array we have already transposed so control shift enter so it will be a transpose and now because a is equal to l times l transpose so let's find a where it's verified y. okay verify so for verification we need to multiply and uh, equal to mmult for the matrix multiplication i will take this value and then this value make it close control shift enter and then i will get exactly the same original answer which means that this um, symmetric matrix was successfully uh, decomposed into its uh, lower uh, triangular matrix matrix Okay, so let's go back to this uh, PowerPoint slide and see what we have over here. So, uh, so this is the same example which we have just uh, solved. Okay, so after that we are now going to talk about the uh, Gauss Seidel method. So it is an iterative or approximate method to provide an alternative to the elimination methods. The gauss seidel method is the most commonly used iterative method. The system Ax is equal to B is reshaped by solving the first equation for x1, the second equation for x2, and the third for x3, and nth equation for xn. So for conciseness, we will limit ourselves to a 3 by 3 uh, set of uh, equations. So, okay, so we can, uh, if we have the general uh, solutions uh, equation, something like A11x1 plus uh, A12x2 plus A13x3 is equal to B1. So we can write these equations in terms of X1, X2, and X3 in this format. And then we will successively compute it and then 
we can start the solution process by choosing the guesses for x's value a simple way to obtain initial guesses to assume that they are zero so in the gauss seidel uh, method then okay so we have this for example the first equation x1 so in the first trial because if we want to find x1 then we assume that x2 and x3 is equal to zero so we get b1 over a11 so x1 is equal to b1 over a11 and uh, here in this case if you see that uh, uh, once we find the x1 then we use this value of x1 into the uh, next equation for x2 it means originally we assumed that it was zero but uh, we can use the most updated value in this here and x3 was will be zero in the first trial and in the second in the for the case of x3 then we can use both x1 and x2 values from the previous trials and then this when this process continues so we can use the values of x2 and x3 from the previous trial into the here so in this way this process continues and then we can uh, reach to the uh, correct solution so in this gauss seidel uh, method the new uh, x1 is uh, substituted to calculate x2 and x3 so the procedure is repeated until the convergence criteria is uh, satisfied so this is the new value minus the origin uh, old value divided by the new value times 100 so in absolute terms it is the uh, relative absolute error this can be represented so the convergence criteria so for the gauss seidel uh, method uh, it is normally a uh, slow okay and sometimes it can be non-convergent uh, as well so let's see this with the help of one example so uh, the example is uh, for the cross seidel method so we have if suppose if you have this uh, uh, this set of equations and then we want to solve it in a, with an iterative method so what we will do is first of all for example we will write these equations in terms of x1 x2 and x3 so if you see that uh, yeah, if we want to write these terms of x1 so this equation will be written like this because you see that 0.1 x2 and 0.2 x3 will go on the other side and add with 7.85 and then 3 will be divided so similarly this will be x2 and x3 so in the first iteration we will take x2 and x3 as 0 okay and uh, then you can see that we can find the value of x1 uh, from x1 then we will find the value of x2 in this case we will use the value of uh, x1 which was previously calculated to find the value of x2 and uh, the value of x3 of course in this case for example over here since up to now we have not uh, calculated the value of x3 so we will use as zero over here so in the first iteration we will get the value of x1 and x2 like this and uh, then when we go to the x3 so by that time we have already found out the values of x1 and x2 in the previous iterations so we can use these values here and then this will give us x3 so in the second so this is the first iteration so in the second iteration now we will use the value of we'll find the value of x1 but in this x1 uh, over here then you will use the values of x2 and x3 which we have found here okay and then this will give us 2.99 
and then this value of 2.99 will be used in x2 and then it will give us the value and uh, the value of x3 will be the previously which was used before and then it will give us the value of minus so as uh, we can see that now the, uh, the solution is uh, converging and then we can see that the relative uh, true error in the relative absolute errors uh, will be uh, also decreasing so maybe we can also employ this method on excel okay so it should be relatively easy okay so let's uh, move to excel so in this excel i have written down this equation into its uh, uh, matrix form and 3 minus 0.1 minus 0 0.2 7.85 0 0.17 minus 0 0.3 minus 19.3 0.30 minus 0 0.2 10 and 71.4 so if i want to iterate these coefficients x1 x2 and x3 so as a first trial i will use 0 0 0 these values okay and then uh, for x1 okay so the next value for the x1 will be uh, equal to so the value of x1. okay so here we will put the formulation so for this uh, a value of x1 will be equal to seven point this value uh, minus uh, sorry this value times x2 minus uh, this value times x3 and then divided by this 3 so in this way we will get this value okay similarly the value for x2 will be equal to um, this value um, minus one will be this value okay and then minus um, this value times the value of x3 will be here and then close and then divided by this coefficient okay so it will be minus 2.79 and then for x3 it will be this value minus this value multiplied by so this is the x1 so x1 is here and uh, minus this value multiplied by x2 and then divided by 10 So in this way, in the first trial, I got these values, which is minus 2, uh, 
0.61 then minus 2.79 and then 7.005 so if i want to further update it in the second trial i will get these values so minus a 2.99 minus 2.499 and 7.0029 so it's converting and then in the third trial i will get further close values okay. so you can see that finally in the fourth trial this is almost giving us the exact values okay so maybe we can find the uh, approximate relative approximate errors so ea x one ea x two ea x three okay relative error so what is the relative error so for example here the error was this value minus the previous value divided by the current value multiplied by 100 so that's it and uh, yeah we, we should take the absolute it in absolute terms so i will put a b s absolute and then mm, absolute okay so now i so i can see that in absolute terms the values are decreasing 112.3.001111 so the values are decreasing in absolute terms absolute relative error so, so relative absolute error at this point is quite low over here so these seems to be quite acceptable and convergent values so remember that while setting up these uh, equations i have several places i have used these uh, dollar e dollar s terms which means that i am using these coefficients over here but I don't want to change these relative values of coefficients when I copy and paste this formula. So that's why uh, this worksheet is uh, working uh, correctly. Okay. So then we obtain this solution very quickly. Okay. So let's move back to the PowerPoint. So that was the example of the gauss seidel method. Okay, so uh, there is another variation of this method is called, which is called as the Jacobi method. So the only difference is that in Jacobi method, you do not uh, update the values of x1, x2, and x3 as and when it is these are ready. So in each iteration, you apply these new values of x1 and x2 and x3 from the previous iteration whereas in the gauss seidel method as soon as the, any of the values of x2 and x2 is updated that is applied in the second iteration so by this reason i think the gauss seidel method will converge relatively quickly compared with the jacobi method so uh, that's uh, that was about this topic and then let's uh, discuss something about the applications of the uh, of the linear system solution of the equations that means the linear algebra equations with some software packages so for example in excel so whether I think we have used in Excel some of these methods that is the some Thomas algorithm and the Cholesky method and then the Gauss-Seidel method but uh, in uh, 
Excel, we can easily find the solution of uh, <coughs> the simultaneous uh, linear equations by the uh, inversion method as well. So, for example, if we have a, a for example, let me open a new sheet in this Excel. Okay, let's open a new sheet in this Excel and then I, if for example, I have uh, a, this system of equation. Okay, so in this case, this is the matrix. So the, that matrix is 1, 1, 1, and then it is uh, equal to 1 by 2. So it is equal to 2 by 3, and it is equal to 3 by 4. And it is equal to 1 by 3, it is equal to 1 by 2, and then it is equal to 3 by 5. Okay, so this is the matrix. And then we have this uh, uh, x1, x1, x2, x3, and then these coefficients are 1.5. 8, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and then 2.1, 6, 6, 6, 6, 7, and then 2.35. So, uh, in Excel, if you want to solve the solution of this equation, of course, uh, there are methods loss elimination but one of the approach may be to use the inverse matrix approach okay so for this we will find the inverse of this matrix so what we will do is inverse of the matrix will be a 3 by 3 matrix in this case and then i will use the uh, matrix uh, formula in excel m inverse M inverse for the matrix inverse and then I will give this an array Control shift enter and then this will give us the inverse of this matrix so which is a nice uh, whole number over here okay um, so this is the a inverse so the solution will be the, the solution matrix okay solution matrix will be the uh, multiplication of the inverse matrix and the this um, b matrix okay so the solution is equal to the m m u l t m m u l t mm, this inverse matrix and this then control shift enter so it will be the solution so it will be 0 0.999991 and then 1.00004 and then 0 0.999996 so this will be the uh, solution okay so generally speaking in uh, excel you can find the solution by this way okay so how about uh, matlab so in matlab there are also a number of uh, functions okay so which we can use okay so let's try matlab okay so clear you'll see and then let me close this window because i just want to use the command window so for example let's me define the equation first so for the equation i need to first define its uh, matrix okay so its matrix so let's define the matrix as uh, one one by two 
one by three. So one, uh, one by two, one by three, then one, two by three, one by two, and then it is uh, one, three by four, three by five. Okay, so let's see what is this matrix. So it is. 1, 1, 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.667, 0 0.75, 0 0.33, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So this is the matrix A. So let's see what is this matrix uh, B on the other side of the equation. So suppose this matrix is uh, 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3. And that is one plus two by three plus one by two, and then one plus three by four plus three by four. Five. I get close. So what's that? One point eight three three, two point one six six seven, three two point three five. Okay. So suppose if you want to find the solution, so there are two ways. Okay, or maybe there are several ways as well. So one of the ways is that if you want to find the solution of this, so we can use we can use the backslash operator so suppose the solution we want to store in x so in this case we can use a backslash operator so we will put a and then backslash b and then i will hit enter and then i will get this solution 1 1 1 which in fact is true because i have chosen this coefficient in such a way that this plus this plus this is equal to this. So this is one, one, one. That is the solution. Uh, another way for finding the solution may be to say x, uh, maybe if you find x2, the second solution, maybe to find the inverse of a. So inverse of a and then multiplied by b so this will also give us the same answer so in this case uh, first of all the inverse of a will be found and then that inverse will be multiplied with b with the solution to find the solution or whereas in this first case a backslash b will normally use the uh, gauss elimination method to solve the system of the equation Okay, so that is some application of the uh, solution of the linear uh, equations in the MATLAB and previously on Excel.